Dynasty Week continues. We've got trade for and trade away candidates on today's show. Some news to talk about. And Jason Moore does his best not to fall asleep live on the air. Do not miss a minute. Leave us a comment. Enjoy. Hey, this is John Taylor running back for the Indianapolis Colts. And you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, May 11th. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Back in business. Another day, another show, another dollar. <laughs> another day, another dollar. Isn't that the saying? That it is. is the saying. You got there eventually. Al Borland in the building, Judge Giamatti, the Borgogian himself. How is Deucer's Alley doing this morning? We're great. Yeah? Right, guys? I concur. Uh, there was some question as to whether today's show would actually get off the ground. But the smelling salts were broken mm, out. Yeah. Jason, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Jason had... Did uh, you forget that you were asleep in a chair mere <laughs> moments ago? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, we were talking about the deucers. And I assumed, I presumed we were about to pile on them. But no, we went with truth. Yes. And the truth was... I was just saying, they're awake I, over there. I am not... I'm awake now. The smelling salts have, have helped, and that, you know... You did legitimately yeah. use some smelling salts. I'm here for you, people. Because you had two... Uh, <laughs> you had a cheesesteak that was too salty. It was <laughs> some special <laughs> to behold. I am a human raisin, and human raisins, I don't know if you know this or not, they get sleepy. I mean, yeah. they get real do, sleepy. Do you also sing doo-wop? Of course. Okay. I'm from California. Well, I mean, uh, it's important that you're here, Jason, because it is. Welcome to Dynasty Week. Did I get you hyped up? Yeah. yeah. Now, you're saying that because I'm a two-time champ of our dynasty? league as are you yes and yes. you're saying that because mike and i are champ 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 on two, dino jr yeah two episodes of the dynasty week this week and then two championships and the dynasty podcast on wednesdays yes which another one came out just yesterday i'm a little offended we didn't highlight my two second place finishes mm, i guess that's... don't talk about losers <laughs> here mike um yeah the dynasty podcast Another episode yesterday for those of you tuning in. I heard it was a uh, – I heard you guys threw a little shade on Drake London. Is that – No, no, not shade Just at a, all. maybe reasonableness? It, it was – we laid out the case of uh, – the question was, who is difficult to rank for Dynasty? And Drake London is a fantasy enigma because everything is there for him, and yet the situation is brutal. I mean, you, you'll – where did uh, how, how you, is everything there for him if his situation is not there I'm saying for him? For him as a player, as in like okay. like his the, the college production was there, the draft capital is there, top ten pick. He showed up last year with a massive target share, had a a season that was good enough that you go, yep, that that is someone who can ball in the NFL. He scored super well in Matt Harmon's reception perception. Just it, it, like there's so much the player, everything is there. But the, everything around him is so rough. Sure. Like you finished, Andy. You're, uh, you're, you kind of wrapped up your initial draft of uh, your redraft rankings for, right. the, for the ultimate draft kit. Where did Drake London end up for you? I will pull it up right now. I want to I want to say he's in the 20s. Right. I've got it. Hold on one second here. Yeah, he's in half point. He's around 30. Yeah, and th that doesn't feel great for a player who should be a easily like well a, below number one overall Terry McLaurin. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a good callback. It's like, but Drake London should be going into year two. He should be just a B 
beast. I think this is, this is one of the reasons, though, that for the UDK this year, we're adding the upside meter. Because there are players that, look, when you, when you have to give them reasonable stat lines based on their situation this year, I wasn't trying to do anything to Drake London other than project what I thought he could do. But his upside is tremendous. His range yes. of outcomes is tremendous. Some of the players ahead of him, you know, Mike Williams. Could, could Drake London outperform Mike Williams this yeah. year? Absolutely. Um, Calvin Ridley, could he outperform Cal? Yes, of course he could. And so he's a player that would have a – he has a tremendous amount of upside. You're right. There are a lot of questions about him. And, um, you know, that's that's part of this time of year is yeah. trying to, to assemble a team – that kind of has some guys that are in that safer category and some guys that maybe you need to shoot for the moon because you want to win the league. You don't want to be a Mike. You don't want to finish second place. Right, right. Hey, wait. Two different times in the Dynasty League. Um, but Silver still shines, fellas. <laughs> that's, that's what the silver medalists say in there <laughs> when they hang out. Uh, we do have a giveaway going on right now, giving away a sweet uh, Justin Jefferson signed jersey. We still have that, Brooks. No one has... Uh, confiscated or stolen it from our burgled. Oh yeah, we got it on camera because oh, okay. Jason's around. I've been looking for it <laughs> everywhere. I have no idea where you're hiding this thing, but well done. Footclangiveaway.com, completely free to enter. Head over there. A um, couple ways to get entries. Footclangiveaway.com, and uh, yeah, we're in Dynasty Week, so we're still talking about these these rookies. Our quick question today ties right into that. Your favorite player going into the third round or later of rookie drafts. Who is that? I'll hop in with Michael Wilson, wide receiver for the Arizona Cardinals. And a lot of us, when the draft happened, we said, who? <laughs> who? <laughs> like, you know, it, there were players in the pre-NFL draft process that we all scout, we get ready for. And then, you know, as we get closer to the NFL draft, there's another round of names that come up. It's like, I am not as familiar with this player. It is rare that the NFL draft itself comes up and a player is drafted on day two that I've never heard of. I had no idea who Michael Wilson was. Uh, the reason why is because he didn't play much college ball. Oh, he, no, he actually played a lot. Well, not of games. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'll say uh, something I don't think I've noticed. I've, I've just logged into Michael Wilson's profile on our website. And we let people know you that you know, height, weight, 6'2", 213. That's great. Mm -hmm. College, Stanford. Okay. I mean, that, that's not like an SEC school or anything. But then class, you know, we're used to, you know, redshirt, junior, senior. He is listed as a graduate student. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he was there for a while. And part of the reason why is because he dealt with a he's lot the books he, he's hitting the books and dealt with a lot of injuries his final three seasons was four games played four games played six games played and that's he had a lot of finals to get to right um he it's is a doctor Stanford, after all <laughs> he is, i mean he is a doctor so he can prescribe stuff now oh, wow. um if you've got you know a cold he, he's the team trainer now as well <laughs> yes but he was you know you, you look at the respect of you think cedric tillman jalen hyatt josh downs these players that we know were familiar with the names. Well, those players and Michael Wilson were round three picks in day two of the NFL draft. The film on Michael Wilson is awesome. He's actually one of the rare, like, NFL prototypical sized successful wide receiver. The Cardinals who, did not draft another Andy Isabella. Right. Uh, you know, he, he's got the, the body, the size, the athleticism, and the film that say – he could be really something special. You add draft capital to it and a team with a, you know, we're talking from a dynasty perspective. Kyler might not be there from week one and Hopkins is there, but the the path towards relevance, if Hopkins is traded away midseason or leaves next year, Kyler is back. Uh, this is um, a good draft capital. And when you're in the third round, you're looking for upside. This is a pick that the Arizona Cardinals are saying we're swinging for upside as well. We're going with a talented player who might have fallen just because he was injured, if he was able to play, he probably would have gone higher. One thing that I was remembering going through the Cardinals in the early UDK rankings was that there isn't a loyalty to uh, Rondale Moore from the general manager and head coach perspective that there has been in the past. Not that I don't think Rondale Moore can be a contributor in this offense, but it also feels like if you, if Rondale Moore doesn't do something this year, we're mo we're probably 
not thinking about him as a big relevant piece in the Cardinals offense in the future, which like you said, Hopkins could be gone. Rondale could be kind of on the outs. And then all of a sudden you have opportunity for Michael Wilson alongside Hollywood, where I believe I just saw the Arizona's wide receiver room is the single most expensive wide receiver room in the NFL. Well, DeAndre Hopkins plus a fifth year option, Hollywood Brown will do that. Just just doesn't yeah. feel like it no, is no, all I'm it, saying. Yeah. It's not the most expensive production. Yeah. Well, no. I guess it is because it'll be I think it'll the, be low production. I think the Vikings are like the fifth lowest in money spent in the wide receiver room. Right oh, now. one of the lowest as well is the Bengals with um <laughs> you know it won't be that for long. No. Uh Mike, who is the uh third round or later rookie pick? for Dynasty Week that you want to bring up? So Jason kind of briefly mentioned him. Cedric Tillman, I do want to give the shout-out to him out of Tennessee. He went to the Cleveland Browns over the, the a, a Dynasty span. So not year one, I don't think it's great, but uh, but Donovan Peoples-Jones is is uh, in a contract year, and I think they'll move on from him. So Cedric Tillman's very interesting, but I want to highlight because it has to be done. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dallas Cowboys got another tight end. And we're back, baby. We got to trust the process. Luke Shoemaker, a.k.a. the Shoon Man. Shoon Man. <laughs> which has been the ditty around the office lately. He was taken in the second round. The The other guys that they have there, you have, you have Ferguson, you have Hendershot. I don't think it's going to be them. Dalton Schultz has moved on to a different team. There's no Blake Jarwin They're, to Bl Bl you. Yeah, well, but I must continue – my crush for a Dallas Cowboys tight end. And it, it's now Luke Schoenmaker who, like, the path for him to be the starting tight end, starting pass-catching tight end week one is wide open. And we know that this that turns into results. Like, he's super old for, for a rookie. Like, he'll be turning 25 this year. That's pretty insane. But the draft capital is there. He has, uh, he has short, uh, short yard, short area quickness. And I think that he can make some noise in the middle of the field with CeeDee Lamb in the slot and Brandon Cooks on the outside. Yeah, the uh, the pick that I have as a tight end as well, drafted uh, very high, third pick of the second round, Sam Laporta for, sure. De for Detroit. And, you know, it's the same argument. They have Jamison Williams that's going to be suspended to start the year. Uh, TJ Hawkinson's time in Detroit ended last season. And, and Laporta is going to come in. I mean, he was drafted ahead of Michael Mayer. And you have a history of Iowa tight ends that included Hawkinson and George Kittle and Noah Fant that have had a lot of NFL success, Dallas Clark going way back. Sam Laporta is going to have an opportunity in this offense right away. And and I thought I thought we saw from Jared Goff that that was a position he'd like to have a weapon at. And you have Amon Ra, but you can't imagine he's catching every single pass on this offense, even though it feels that way right now. I think Laporta is going to be, you know, I think last year in the very beginning, you remember when Bellinger kind of flashed for a, a few weeks yeah. in New York? Mm -hmm. I think there's going to be, and then he got hurt, and then obviously they've they've brought in Darren Waller. I think Laporta will have some early season success that nobody's going to see coming and the ability to establish himself on a dynasty timeline. Oh, yeah, I, I, Laporta, I would much prefer him over Shoemaker. I've seen Laporta go. He's he's an interesting Player, uh, higher than yeah, third round. Like, I've seen early second round. I've seen early third round. Like he's like it, how we said, you know, after the 107, everything just kind of gets pretty crazy. So yes, if if Laporte was there, I would draft him over the Shoon Man. It's not as fun because you don't get to sing Shoon Man. But <laughs> I just want to make sure that people know. I would yes, I would take Laporta over the old man Shoon Man. Well, I think it's important to look at like when we when you're talking about the back half of your rookie drafts. This is where I prefer to take the tight ends. Sam Laporta uh, could be better than Dalton Kincaid. I mean, just straight up could have a better fantasy career, and he's cheaper. Michael Mayer, uh, the Shoon Man, because of the opportunity in the in the offense. So I would rather take the uh, second round wide receivers at the top of my rookie drafts, and then grab these type of tight ends in the back half of my rookie drafts. That's that's the way we play. Yeah, it's always uh, – it, it seems like tight ends and some of the lower quarterbacks, they just drop and drop in rookie drafts sometimes because you know you might not have immediate impact. And so uh, that weight can be – it can be tough. Yeah. So it just seems like they're always there. And then I generally – I think it was one of our tips in earlier Dynasty show. It's like I've regretted not taking some of these quarterbacks. 
as they drop in these drafts because they end up being relevant quicker than I thought. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Okay, Foster Moreau. Yeah. Got himself a three-year, $12 million deal. $8 million guaranteed with the New Orleans Saints. Yeah, so the, the team that did discover uh, his lymphoma, they they said, no, man, we're, we're, we're not going to mess around. We want you on this team. And Foster Moreau, I mean, speaking of, of uh, dynasty tight ends, Foster Moreau may have hit your waiver wire, and he was someone who I thought was a very interesting player. Expected him to get a a good contract. Now, unfortunately, he had the health complications, so it was not like it's it's not the splash contract like you're hoping. He's going to have to have you know treatment t- treatment uh, to come back. But he's it, it, there's a chance that he's on your waiver wire, and if you have a bench spot to spare, knowing it's going to be a while before he does anything, he's he will be interesting long uh, long term. What I, I I don't know if anybody's brought this up. I'm just thinking on the top of my head. But is this in part? I mean, he he has to get treatment, but he didn't have a contract. He wasn't with a team. Correct. And having a contract is kind of a prerequisite to having health coverage that the I, NFL provides. I believe he was in the league long enough because he's on. This will be okay. his second contract. I think he still would have would have had, had access okay. to the benefits. Yeah, but, but, but this is the Saints. To me, this is this is a pretty strong statement for a team saying that this is a player that's not going to be available for our team for this season, but we want to make sure that nobody else picks him up. Well, and, and hopefully it's a, a good sign for his health because sure. if the team is willing to go out and do this, then they're confident he's going to get back to health. And um, free agency ended up really uh, working out for Foster Moreau, not in the sense that, hey, you know, he wouldn't have wanted that situation. Yeah. But discovering it yeah. and then getting the treatment for it, um, so oh, he's going to try to play this year. That Brooks? is being reported. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. He play he he wow. plans to play in 2023. That's wild, man. The only athlete case of Hodgkin's lymphoma that I can remember was Mario Lemieux, which I see Kyle thankfully here nodding with me. <laughs> um, can you think of another one, Kyle? That's the one that came to my mind. Did he play? How, I think he played pretty soon. Not a hockey analyst. Okay. You know. All right. All right. I was, I was going as deep as I could. I just trusted you, uh, but it wasn't King Griffey, so I, I don't expect you to know very much. Um, NFL schedule release. That's today. Yes. It hasn't happened yet as of this recording. Uh, we have an international schedule that puts the Jacksonville Jaguars playing back-to-back games in uh England. They've got to get used to it because that will be their home in <laughs> so, about four years. So they're just going to stay there, right? Yes. I wish they wouldn't tell them. Like it was like they play their one game and then they go, all right, guys, and the plane just circles and lands again. And then, oh, you're back home. I mean, this is a team that could actually be there in the future. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, the, the insiders it's around coming, the Mike. NFL, they... I, They've talked about the expansion and the fact like that there, there's going to be teams, probably a, their own division, maybe even four teams in Europe. Um, you cannot the, tell me you don't want to say Tottenham a lot. I would Tot- love They're playing to at say Tottenham. Tottenham. Yeah. Tot- Tottenham. I feel Tot- like that's, is it Tottenham? Uh, that's Could, the way I would say it. <laughs> what accent is that? It's <laughs> Cockney. <laughs> no, it's not. It's what. I mean, that's one of the things I'm most jealous of of uh, following international um, football, soccer overseas is these the stadiums have great names. The, yeah. How, yeah, what's that name again, Jason? It's Tottenham. It's Tottenham. You'd rather, Tottenham. You'd rather talk about Tottenham and not like crypto.com. Yeah, arena. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, there'll be a couple games in Germany, week nine and week 10, game in London in week four, and then a couple at, at Tottenham. All right, Dan Campbell. So this year is going to be a redshirt year for Hendon Hooker. Yeah, that uh, that makes sense. He's still recovering from an ACL, and he's not NFL ready. That is the accent of a man who used smelling salts recently. <laughs> <laughs> um, a couple of uh, – do we have the hype train? Yeah, get it going. ESPN. It's time, baby. This is uh, David Newton writing that the goal – is to get Miles Sanders back to where he was as a rookie in 2019 where he caught 50 passes. I like that goal. He will be a three-down back, and I will not say where I have him in my rankings yet, (laughs) like Terry McClure, but let me just say I believe wholeheartedly 
that he is going to have a fantastic season, and I will be moving him down from where my <laughs> where my initial rankings put him. I won't even say where it's at because it who caliente. Yeah, well, I I'm with you. I think Miles Sanders is somebody I'd be targeting. You know, you talk about dynasty. I'd be targeting Miles Sanders. I've tried to trade for him. I have not succeeded, but I would be going after Miles Sanders right now. This, this is a team that showed that they can impose their will running the football last year at times. There is no one else. It's Miles Sanders and Chuba Hubbard. I mm -hmm. mean, um, it, Miles is going to get every opportunity, got the contract. And if this is true, which, look, I don't know if it's true, because we we've never seen Bryce Young play football at the NFL level. So um, is this going to be part of his game? I don't know. But Miles Sanders is capable of it. It's very, very, very true. Miles Sanders is capable of it. He's done it with this head coach before. He's got it in his background. He was not a pass catching back with Jalen Hurts necessarily, but he has the ability. You say, well, Bryce Young has a touch the NFL field. That's true. But who did he just play with? Jameer Gibbs, who was a check down machine in college, and he looks for that outlet. So we know that that's in his world. So we know the coaching staff has it you know, in their arsenal, the quarterback has it there, the running back has it, and they're talking about it. It's it, There's too much smoke. And since 2014, rookie quarterbacks with nine-plus starts targeted their running backs slightly above league average at 20.4%, which would be, you know, obviously that's not all going to be Miles Sanders, but if he had a target share um, that was significantly higher than it was in Philly, that would be very valuable. I mean, if, he, if he pulls in a 16 17% target share. Oh, that would be outrageous. That would be so good. he would be almost worthy of wherever you have him ranked. <laughs> yeah, Oof. you don't want to know. <laughs> and then there was some talk. Uh, the athletic uh, report. Here we go. Believing that Romeo Dobbs will lead the Packers in receptions this year. Yeah, let's let's get a whole a whole new off season of more Romeo Dobbs. This is action. his season, man. Mm. He's really good. The off at season. This. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, can tell you, I don't have him leading the team in receptions. Well, you don't work for the athletic. No, I. Uh, I mean, where are you guys with Jaden Reed's contribution to the, not, to the offense as a rookie? And obviously Christian Watson's going to be there. They drafted a couple tight ends. W Watson's not a high-volume guy, at least just he, he wasn't last year. It was big splash plays, big-time touchdowns. For what it's I mean, worth, last year, Dobbs, 42 receptions. Christian Watson, 41 receptions. How, how many games? Dobbs, Dobbs played one fewer game. Yeah, so – I I don't think it's outrageous to, to think that Romeo Dobbs could be the, the PPR guy uh, – for this team. I mean, Jaden Reed, yeah, he's a second round pick, but he's still a rookie. We don't know for sure if he's actually going to be good. And he's, you know, a little bit older of a older for a rookie and Romeo Dobbs. Look, hype season is fun. And a lot of it is, is not real, but a lot of the hype last year, I feel like was coming directly because of Aaron Rodgers. And if Aaron Rodgers was already believing in Romeo Dobbs talent, I think we, it's safe to say that he, should be a good player. Well, I, maybe that's true, but it also shows you that the hype season led to 42 for 425 and 3, which yeah. was not worthy of the train. Like, if you could roll that train back down the tracks and ignore that player outside of maybe a game or two. Well, I mean, he so he missed four. He Like, he did not appear in four games because he got hurt in week nine, which was 1% of the snap. So that's essentially – that's five full games there. I'm not saying he, the, the the season overall wasn't great, but yeah, up, up until the injury, he was on pace for 100 targets, 63 receptions, 629 yards, a solid rookie season. Yes, not great, especially for a fourth round wide receiver. All right, any other news we got to cover, Brooksy? I will throw something out uh -oh. that it is Dynasty Week, so you Do know. Do I need the salt? Or are we good? No, we're we're good because this is just this is just a little little taste that next week. There is a big announcement, mm. a big, big, big. I mean, we're talking. We got trumpets. <sighs> yeah, I mean, whoa, 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 take it easy, take it easy. But yeah, so you you'll want to not miss that, as well as the rest of this show. But, but don't miss the but, rest but, of the show either. Is what you're saying? Yeah, don't miss the rest of this show, and don't miss next week when there's a big announcement. Okay, you got to get your teas in. Yes. Um, quick break and back with some trade talk. Tottenham. Tottenham. <laughs> Tottenham. Okay, so that's better. That, um, is, that was better. That is not what you did earlier. Governor? Governor. 
Jason doesn't even have the strength to refute you in an argument. I, I just saw him yeah, resign you, himself in I, the middle. He was going to come mm, back at you, yep. and you ran out of gas. I am a hollow man right now, but uh, I am here for the people. How big was this sub sandwich? <laughs> it was enormous, and they spilled the salt container all over it. I've never had, I mean, I've watched you eat things uh, for years. I've never had you react this uh, quickly to the salt content. You like, ever heard me say something's too salty? No. In my life? No. No one has. This thing was outrageous. What happens to you when you have too much salt? Uh, you go to sleep. That's what I've learned. <laughs> you actually just go straight to sleep. Oh, man. Uh, I guess we better move on before we lose you. Let's talk trades. All right, we have a trade for candidate in Dynasty Leagues and a trade away candidate in Dynasty Leagues that we're each going to bring forward. I think several of these names are quite spicy, so take them for what they are. I mean, there are opinions. We, You have to kind of draw your line in the sand when it comes to Dynasty Leagues and make it the, – the good trades are the ones where you make that decision. Yes. And uh, if you end up right, you're living – life i mean there you're just there's nothing better than that kind of projection trade in dynasty that works out because you saw it coming and you got more value or uh, for these players so let's begin with uh i'll go let's start with the trade four candidates okay and i'm actually going to go with a player that ended up number three in my redraft rankings this year at running back Ooh. and it's it's nicholas chubb nicholas at 27 years old running back for the cleveland browns He's under contract for two more years. If you remember last year, he was not ranked near the top five and yet was the number one running back for the first eight weeks of the season. Uh, you have a backfield in Cleveland. This is more now for Nick Chubb. It's barren. I mean, the, the hype train around Jerome Ford, they, hang, they hung on to him. They don't have Kareem Hunt. Cool, Jerome Ford's there. That's not peak Kareem Hunt when Nick Chubb was still a viable starter. So... I think this comes down to, in a way, calling your shot on Cleveland, this offense, and Deshaun Watson and what you believe will happen. And Deshaun Watson is still very young. And up until one half of a season last year, he was an MVP-level quarterback that could move an offense down the field. I think Nick Chubb is a player that is just old enough to where you can knock on that door in Dynasty Leagues and maybe have somebody willing to go the other direction. I mean, Jason, you and I have, have debated Deshaun Watson's capabilities and, and whether he will rebound. And there's going to be people in your league that, look, if you were in that situation and you don't believe in that offense, maybe you would be interested in trading Nick Chubb away for a younger a younger name. Uh, yeah, there, there will certainly be people that are looking at Nick Chubb and saying, now's the time to capitalize. You know, one of the tips we usually give is when you're into your second contract and you've got a great running back, capitalize. Trade him away for a young running back and a first-round pick or something. Replenish, stay active. That's usually how I want to play. All of these trade for candidates and trade away candidates are going to be depending upon your window of your team right now. If you're in a championship window and you can win, right now he's under contract for two more years. Should something bad happen this year, they could get out of his contract rather easily um, after this season. But I, I, I think we all, like right now, Andy, he's my running back four. So we, we're projecting an amazing season for him, much more pass catching than he's had in the past. It's not just Kareem Hunt that's gone. Dearness Johnson has left as well. So, And um, I, I want to remind people, this: he had his career high in rushing yards last year. He was awesome. 1,525 yards rushing. And um, th he's going to have a, a end zone opportunity. So I actually think he's a two-year championship window acquisition for for a team that is looking to close. I, I look at that with Josh Jacobs right now. If you are trying to close the gap and get your title before you get out, I think Jacobs and Chubb are both in that category. Yeah, the, it's he's an incredible player. We're, we have five years of Nicholas Chubb. And he has rushed for at least five yards a carry every single year. He's which, the like, best runner. Like that's out is outrageous production. And it, I think you're right, Andy, of it's what do you believe about the Cleveland Browns and Deshaun Watson? Because last year 
Nick Chubb scored 12 rushing touchdowns. 12 on the season. That's a fantastic number. Deshaun Watson came in week 13, and from week 13 through the end of the year, Nick Chubb was on pace for a, for a 17 game pace of zero rushing touchdowns. Yeah. Which just shows you how high he could have finished last year yes. had they been competent. I mean, he's never had a season at the NFL level because the yardage with was fewer than eight touchdowns in a season. The like yardage was still there. He was still on pace for almost fourteen hundred rushing yards in the Deshaun Watson uh, stretch. But the fact that he scored no rushing touchdowns that burns. Yeah, no, and I think it it also means it's a buying opportunity because that fear can be put into somebody else, and you might be able to acquire him. So, uh, Jason. Who's your trade four candidate? My trade four candidate in a dynasty league is JK two legs Dobbins. JK two L. JK two L. Uh, <laughs> he's back and he's got both of his legs this time in the sequel. This now, time. have you confirmed it's that? Personal. I have confirmed that. Have you been watching him walking like to a movie theater or anything like that? Oh, is he, he using? Is he hopping? He's not doing. Circles? He's not running in a circle anymore because one leg is so superior and stronger. We, we've got a lot of data. We've talked about it in other shows about how a player that's coming back from a knee injury, they usually, especially when it is a bigger surgery like what J.K. Dobbins had, it's not year one that they're back that they're good. But the following season after that, they're back to what they were before they left. And J.K. Dobbins, as a rookie, showed flashes of brilliance. He was supposed to be great. And we've seen those flashes even last year, in his first year back from the knee injury, he had another injury in the middle of the year. It was, it was a it was a really difficult season for him. But that those final four games that he was able to put together, Dude, those numbers are insane. They're insane. I mean, it would <laughs> just, just to give you an example, that would be a pace of sixteen hundred yards. He was averaging ninety nine point three yards per game during that stretch. He is a really good player. I am buying into the Baltimore Ravens offense in major ways. I think Ton Monkey coming in is going to be good. They did not add to this running back room. It's J.K. Dobbins. It's Gus Edwards. There's a 24-year-old running back that I believe he's coming up. He's playing on a contract year. I think he's going to get another contract because he's young. He doesn't have a lot of wear and tear on him. Obviously, he, is, he should be completely healed from his injury. And there are situations in the NFL where it is the mid-level running back who actually goes on to get another contract, a la Miles Sanders. Right, Zeke is still out there waiting to get a contract because he wants to get paid. You know, he's he's a superstar. He's been a, there, you know, it's it's J.K. Dobbins who a team's going to go a target next year and say, hey, we can get him for a really reasonable contract. I think he's an exceptional running back. I believe in the Baltimore Ravens offense right now, and he hasn't done much in his career, so I I don't think he's going to cost you an arm and a leg. <laughs> I to get see a weak let, leg. Let me ask yeah, you two, leg. two questions about J.K. Dobbins. Because when I was running up against his Baltimore offense, I know you've been very vocal. You believe that the, the addition of the the, the new receiver uh, situation for Lamar Jackson, it's mm -hmm. significant, right? Beckham, save flowers, Rashad Bateman healthy, the addition of Todd Monken as your offensive coordinator. You've talked a lot about pass heavy. Yeah. Um, looking back at like kind of the history of, of J.K. Dobbins, it's been efficiency, right? Not quantity. Do you think that this is a – um, the same storyline for Jacob Dobbins, where you're talking, you know, I don't know. I think as a rookie, he was in the almost six a carry, but it was yeah. eleven to thirteen carries a game. Do you see his volume being? The volume's going to be great. Um, this is a two man timeshare between him and Gus Edwards, and well, he three way will... if you count Lamar. Sure, sure, but you know, look, looking last year, that 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 aforementioned stretch, he was basically on pace for about 242 rushing attempts. So I do think he has enough volume in the ground game. Well, they didn't have any of those receivers last year, though. That was kind of my point. I was saying you were saying they're going to throw for 6,000 yards or whatever. I, I, I believe that the whole of the offense will be so much better. The The fact that you can't stack the box because you do have to guard wide receivers. The fact that you have more touchdown opportunities at the goal line because you can move the ball. There's no way that the Baltimore offense next year is not – vastly superior to what it was this last year with a hodgepodge of wide receivers, no Lamar Jackson. And so lanes are going to be open for J.K. Dobbins. So I don't see, the, I so don't see kind, the volume as an issue at all. What kind of older running back would you move to pick up J.K. Dobbins? If you're doing that running back trade situation, are you uh, – is it, is it – I mean, I think you do Dalvin Cook because I don't think there's a lot of Dalvin Cook confidence right now. 
But, um, you know, are you trading Derrick Henry in a dynasty league for J.K. Dobbins? I would do Probably that. J.K. plus. Yeah, you would want more just because of the, the age gap there. Um, I don't think you're going to get more from the Derrick Henry manager. There. Why would the Derrick Henry manager send no, more? If, if, no, no, no. If I'm the oh, Derrick the Henry manager, gotcha, I'm getting gotcha. J.K. Dobbins plus something. Gotcha. That is kind of the type of trade we've been talking about. You want to trade a great running back for would a you young running back plus you know, some Saquon's? assets. Saquon's? So we'll talk about him in a minute. Um, I would include him in a deal, but it's got to be it's got to be significantly plus. Because if Jones. you look at the value, oh Aaron Jones for sure. If if yeah. you look at the perceived value right of Saquon, it's enormous. If you look at the perceived value of J.K. Dobbins, it's Paquito. It's it, you, no nobody's in love with J.K. Dobbins. That's why he's a trade for candidate because I don't think you should have to give up too too much. Mike, you have a trade for candidate that um... it's risky. Okay, I, I like, yeah, I mean, it's it's one that I am I look at and I go, I don't know. Yes, I, I admit that this is risky, but Andy, what you were saying about the trades of the dynasty trades on paper are going to feel, you know, risky either way. Like maybe I won, maybe I gave up a little bit, but I got the player that I wanted to get. And But it's about projecting into the future. It's about trying to take advantage of a value right now that you think can go up drastically and my trade for uh candidate it's alexander madison running back of the minnesota vikings current backup running back for the minnesota vikings however he did just get a brand new contract which is it it's not a nothing contract like they are financially invested into madison so trading for him no matter what you have a, a guy who's securing his job and is going to be a part of the team's future but there is the chance, with all the rumors floating around, there's a chance that come June, Dalvin Cook is traded. There's a chance that it it may not be in June. Like it might be a little bit later in you know in the tr in actual training camp time. Someone loses a running back and they go and they trade for Dalvin Cook. But there's been just so much noise out of Minnesota over really over the the the, the, the last season of saying looking forward. We're probably not going to have Dalvin Cook on this team, or they're going to have to. Dalvin Cook's going to have to take a lower salary, which that's up to Dalvin Cook if he wants to do. Zeke clearly did not want to do that, and the Dallas Cowboys were forced to move on from him. But the point being, if you trade for Alexander Madison right now, as opposed to you wait until June, the second that that news hits the wire, you get your sleeper alert. Dalvin Cook has been traded, and Alexander Madison is the starting running back for the Minnesota Vikings, in which eight career games. Uh, when Dalvin was out, we're talking 15-plus opportunities. You're talking an average of nearly 17 fantasy points per game. He has been very, very capable in that high-powered offense to be uh, a stud for, for fantasy football. If you trade for him in June, you're paying way, way, way more because if you do it right now, you are taking on the risk that Dalvin Cook isn't actually traded. Yeah, and, the, and there's a perfect trade opportunity. It's a second-round pick. Like, to me, that's – because there's risk for both sides. Yes. Your second-round pick, what what's the percentage that that's going to hit? You know, it's probably – If I got – do you use the second-round pick on Dwayne McBride? <laughs> if oh, you do that trade? Yeah, and that's, who would you rather have? Yeah, and the – Madison or Dwayne McBride? I would rather have Madison. Yeah, I mean, easily. I'd rather have Madison. Like, McBride's a seventh-round pick. He may not even be – third on the depth chart behind Ty Chandler. The $7 million deal they gave Alexander Madison is almost fully guaranteed. It's it's like $6.5 million guaranteed over the next two years. I think even more guaranteed next season. How so much that, was the Mostert deal in Miami? Do you remember that one? Cause I that, think that was like a million. I'll no, look it up. No, no, no. He signed a two-year deal, I thought, for like around that amount of money. I will pull it up. I, I, I'm only saying that because I was thinking about Three the – Three-year, $8.7 Is that a couple years ago? Yeah, I'm, I'm just talking about the the most recent Mostert Miami deal. I just remember that number. I was, two year, five point six million. Okay, there so you go. So right there now for 2023, Mostert is guaranteed nine hundred thousand dollars. Well, I was I was talking about the deal because Madison's money right. and Mostert's money were very similar. So Madison was two year seven million. Yeah. Versus two year five point six, but Madison's but a year getting, later, you know, when the cap goes up. So I think those are similar types of commitments. Right, but Madison got almost all of it guaranteed. Mostert was only two million guaranteed. Yeah, so it is it is risky. It is trying to steal future value and you it like Dalvin Cook could be it's, he could still be on this team and if Dalvin Cook is on the Minnesota Vikings, 
he's the guy. I'm not saying Madison got the contract so he's taken over. No, Davokuk is still good. But there's a financial world in the business of football that says Dalvin Cook may not be on this team. And if that happens, Madison is the primary guy because there's no one else on the depth well, chart that, who can challenge and him. And that's that's another thing I think of the Madison decision-making is do you believe that a team like Minnesota, who was a um, pretty good football team, has a division that they can win? Are they are they willing to go into this season with only Madison? You know, I believe Ty so. Chandler's unproven. McBride's a late-round pick. Um my only worry would be if that happened that they would add somebody else, but uh, but if Madison's they, been good. If they do add someone else, it has to be cost efficient because you're not going to you're not going to clear uh, Dalvin's you're, money. You're not going to clear yeah, Dalvin's oh, money. Sure. Eat his dead cap no, and then be, be like, like, "Hey Zeke, we're going to give you five million dollars a year." To me, it's more like the Deontay Foreman situation in Chicago, where like they didn't have enough confidence in Khalil Herbert to be the only guy. So Foreman was brought in there to contribute. Sure. Uh, do you, Jason? Do you want to go ahead with your trade away candidate since I mentioned his name earlier? Yeah, yeah. I if I had Saquon Barkley, I am one hundred percent trying to capitalize and trade him. And this is not an anti Saquon take. Saquon should be great this year. Saquon's value is really, really high. He's still seen as this young, super athletic running back who is a workhorse back and it is going to be awesome this year. He's a first round draft pick or you know maybe at the one two turn for this season and he's not aged out he's you know uh, very very desired in dynasty leagues and that is why you want to trade him now because he's on the franchise tag he his offer his long-term offer was rescinded by the Giants they they said yeah we're just gonna play this year out next year when he goes to get a contract kind of like what I was saying about Zeke still out there looking for a contract while Miles Sanders goes and gets it I think J.K. Dobbins gets a contract while Saquon is trying to find out who's going to pay him Saquon level money and it just might be no one because he's a running back and he'll be 27 years old and he'll find a spot but this is where you can I believe trade for you could trade him for a younger longer window running back who's still very good you know someone like a Travis Etienne plus something um because Saquon is beloved in the dynasty community and there's uh you know there's a lot of running backs out there that Miles I, Sanders yeah honestly if you get Miles Sanders plus enough absolutely that that's capitalizing on Saquon's name there's running I feel backs like that would be a big story in a league if that trade got done yeah I mean there there's there's a number of um, younger window running backs that I think you could go out and target and try to turn Saquon into. And, I, you know, this is where I do it because we don't know what team he's going to play for next year. I would be surprised if it's the Giants. And so get out while he while he has high value. Right now I'm looking at, like, dynasty, average dynasty startup rankings, and he's the running back five. This isn't someone that – it's not like trying to trade Derrick Henry right now. Whereas, like, people are like, dude, this is a dynasty league. I don't want Derrick Henry. Right. Everyone he, wants Saquon. They want a young stud running back, and they will pay up for him. Now, would my you, current age of my dynasty team would love Derrick Henry. <laughs> Derrick Henry we could come in and be the young buck. Would, now, looking cross-positionally and at rookies, Jay, let's say would your level of trading Saquon, would you be willing to take something like uh, – Let's go picks that turned into Jordan Addison and oh, it's hard to find like a secondary running back. So like would would you do it for Addison and A Chain? That yeah. was the name I was gonna bring up. Yeah, I think Addison you and A Chain, I think that's that's really you, good value. Yeah. Okay. I'll do that. Uh the name I'll bring up is what I what I think is going to be a dynasty tier adjustment that you're going to get ahead of. So when I say trade away, it's not that this player isn't going to be very productive. It's that I think that he will adjust long-term in dynasty players' minds, and it's Jonathan Taylor. Um, Jonathan Taylor is in the final year of a rookie deal. So his future in Indianapolis is up in the air at a, at a minimum. Um, you have new head coach, new quarterback. you got a quarterback that runs the ball a ton, and Anthony Richardson, who is really – you know, he's a home run shot for this franchise, and maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't. I think we saw a massive difference in Jonathan Taylor's success when you went away from what I think was a competent offense at times with Matt Ryan the year before to 
the different – who did they put out there? They put out Foles for a week, but who was the other – quarterback who I'm forgetting what? Sam, Sam Ellinger. Ellinger Sam Ellinger yeah I mean you really if you don't have some <laughs> some confidence in the offense I think the tier change for Jonathan Taylor where he's looked at as a perennial top three dynasty pick I think is going to become something where you look at him more like a top 10 and so if you can get top three value I think this is the moment that you can go and shoot your shot on another player at the running back position and something for Jonathan Taylor. So I, I just don't have him ranked as high as I have in the past. Yeah, I, when when I saw this name, I I really didn't like it. I, <laughs> I want to disagree with you. He is a young stud guy that I am fully confident will sign a long-term extension with the Colts this season. I, I the, the, You know, this coming off season. I, Brees I, Hall. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I would take Brees Hall um, over Jonathan Taylor, but... What I'm saying here is when I didn't like it, I went back and I looked at my redraft rankings because I love Jonathan Taylor. I think he's going to get back to his form. But back to his form with an Anthony Richardson-level offense that probably is not going to check the ball down quite as much because he's mobile, he's active, he's going to be running, he's going to be scrambling. There aren't going to be Rivers. yeah Philip Rivers checking the ball down 100 times or Matt Ryan. Jonathan Taylor is around – I've got about seven teams left to finish statting, which includes Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs and Brees Hall that could go ahead of him. It looks like Jonathan Taylor is going to be near my running back nine or ten for redraft. And so if that's this season, he's already kind of in that tier three player. If you could get a haul of hauls, I am okay exploring that. But I, I do think you could still have a year or two of greatness – and then trade him. So, like, my window for him would probably be at least next year or the year next to it. But if someone's willing to pay up. Yeah, I just think that the, the he was so incredible for that one season that those kind of years kind of get burned in your mind for many seasons. And so if you can sell somebody on that kind of a promise, a return to glory after the injury year, um, you can get that guy on your team. I know I traded for Jonathan Taylor sometime last year 100% because of that. It's like, oh my gosh, what if he is that guy? As soon as he's healthy, he'll be that guy. And so that that can be a valuable thing. He is also He's so good. Super good. <laughs> oh, he he, is, it could be a backfire he for sure. Is the Hulk. If their offense is great under Sykin and Richardson, that would be a it could be a big mistake. But traditionally we see a, a history of, you know, the ceiling being lower for running backs when their quarterback is an elite rushing quarterback. Yes. And so what what did he have? Twenty something did he have twenty touchdowns two years ago? I know it was at least eighteen rushing. Like it was Yeah, ridiculous. I mean I think he was right around twenty, so maybe that ceiling doesn't exist with a rushing quarterback that's gonna be a threat on the goal line. Um yeah, it was eighteen eighteen rushing touchdowns. Two receiving. Two receiving. So okay. All right, I will jump in here my trade away. Uh I don't think it's as uh it's not as spicy as trying to trade Saquon or Jonathan Taylor. It's trading away an old running back. It's Aaron Jones of the Green Bay Packers, who is 28 and a half years old. He still has two years left on his contract. They restructured a little. The restructuring was a little strange, in my opinion, how they, they went about it, because he's on the team this year. And then in 2024, his cap hit would be $17 million, but his dead cap is, is 12.3. So that will be a. Uh, that'll be quite the predicament for the Green Bay Packers to make the decision of do you give a 30-year-old running back s almost 7% of your cap or do you eat 12 uh, in dead cap or or even the possibility of trading him away. And it's it's to me, it's the age when these things fall off for these running backs. It happens rapidly. It hasn't happened yet. Aaron Jones is still great. But then you have this... You don't have Aaron Rodgers anymore. This is Jordan Love will be leading the team. I think the Green Bay Packers kind of showed their hand a little bit of their confidence level in Jordan Love that they didn't give him the fifth year option. They gave him him this what was called an extension, even though it was in fact a pay cut to, to uh, uh for, so that the Green Bay Packers can play him this year. If things don't work out and he stinks, they can move on and they don't have to worry about all that money for next year of you know the injury guarantee of the fifth-year option. But Aaron Jones, it we don't know what the offense is going to look like, so that's that's a, a little bit of a variable. And there are teams out there, there are, there are contending teams 
that can take Aaron Jones and it will help them get over the top. So he still has a ton of trade value, but I think that that trade value will evaporate. If Aaron Jones has a less than great year, this or less than great season this year, you're going to find yourself in a really bad situation. Oh, you'll be very of, old at that point, of, almost 30. I'm, I'm saying if you have a decline at all in the statistics this year and his age, your ability to, to trade Aaron Jones for a first-round pick or first-round plus or young player, it will be gone. Oh, the bag will be held yes. at that point yes, it for will. sure. And and the, the contract extension they gave him, the two-year extension – I believe that it is so that they can release him next year, save some money. They, they'll have to take the, the, the cap hit, but my presumption right now is that he'll play this year and probably be done or be looking for a team. For the Packers. Yeah. For the Packers. Yeah. I it, It'll be a reset of values in Green Bay, too, with Jordan Love at quarterback after this season. For, for better or for worse, you're going to have a better picture of what to expect because, look, nobody knows what Jordan Love's going to be. They don't. We saw nothing from Jordan Love last year. Very few snaps. And it's it'll be I mean, just overall in Green Bay, it's gonna be very interesting to what's watch. What's the identity of that offense? Yeah, what is what's the identity? What do they you know, we still have obviously uh, we have a whole season of football, but Dynasty you're trying to at least project a couple years ahead too. But if Aaron Jones is gone, AJ Dillon is on the last year of his contract. Yeah, I just like, he doesn't seem like the future there. For AJ Dillon? Yeah. He he may or may like I think Dillon will get just like Dobbins, I think Dylan will get a contract from from somebody that'll be uh, maybe not what Miles Sanders got this year, but more like but like what David Montgomery that got this year. I think that AJ Dylan can get a contract in that range. I think I'll get a committee contract. Yeah, I um, I don't see bright days ahead. I, for... It wasn't a good year for AJ Dylan. Let me see the. I think he was three point nine a carry last was year. It? Yeah, when I was looking at those numbers, I was a little bit like, man, he's flashed at times, but he did just yeah four point one. Was he? Yeah. He it was a four point one that looked like three point nine to me. <laughs> that's that's a fair you know what I mean. Look, for <laughs> for what we were hoping for, it was He was a little let down. Yes. Trains look like they're moving slowly, <laughs> but they are not. He's right. Yeah, he's a big boy. All right. Uh I think that's it. We got a giveaway, Justin Jefferson signed jersey, footclan giveaway dot com. Go check that out. Jason's got a nap to get to, and we will be Back with another show and a big, juicy announcement you do not want to miss. It's a mega-sized announcement, everybody. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.